Peter O'Neill leads a delegation to the Apex Summit in China. A middle-aged man tortured for allegedly practicing sorcery. And a thirst for PNG, a new eye theatre in Medang. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Monday's news. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has joined other world leaders in Beijing, China for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. He has reaffirmed Papua New Guinea's commitment to provide leadership in the Pacific region as PNG prepares to host APEC 2018. Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill arrived in Beijing Sunday to attend the 22nd Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation Economic Leaders Meeting slated for November 10th to 11th. Foreign Affairs Minister Rimbing Pato along with Chinese officials were present to receive the Prime Minister. This APEC is important to Papua New Guinea as it prepares to host the APEC 2018. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill reassured the APEC community that PNG is ready. We are also building the infrastructure so that we can set the greater Pacific community. And as PNG's economy grows, the Prime Minister wants to see a ripple effect on the rest of the Pacific. Why it is important that uh, we continue to provide the leadership that we, is required of us in the Pacific. Foreign Affairs Minister Rimbing Pato reaffirmed the level of preparedness PNG is taking towards APEC 2018. He says work has started and it will continue to intensify. Officials between the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Department of Trade, Commerce and Industry, the Office of the Prime Minister, the APEC Secretariat to be set up in 2015 will be working together to address the key issues come APEC 2018. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister says Papua New Guinea is set for the 2018 APEC Summit as groundworks take place. Mr O'Neill gave his assurance that an authority already established will take charge of the preparations. Prior to the 2018 Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Leaders Summit, PNG will host several international events to set the precedence. Since becoming a member of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation in 1993, this will be the first time for Papua New Guinea to host the APEC Leaders Summit in 2018. With almost four years to prepare for the international meeting, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says preparations are underway to facilitate and ensure a successful APEC summit. Under the Department of Prime Minister and NEC, they have established an authority to take charge of the preparations. Our economy grows. The infrastructure needed to maintain that growth continues to be in demand. As a result of that, we are building more roads, we are building the expansion of our existing airports to accommodate more flights. And of course, we are building more hotels, and making sure that we expand our port facilities so we can bring in cruiser lines that will provide additional accommodation for our delegates. Mr. O'Neill said PNG is working closely with APEC member countries to build its capacity. APEC PNG 2018 will make a positive contribution to advancing ongoing APEC's policy agenda. It will also expose Papua New Guinea's diverse culture to visiting member countries. Some of the lead-up meetings we will be hosting in the other cities in Papua New Guinea, like Leh, Rabaul, Medan. These are beautiful cities, offer some of the be beautiful sceneries and in those cities, and I think uh, it is important that our delegates enjoy their stay with us. Uh, during the course of their conferences. At the summit, Papua New Guinea aims to present important issues that are confronting the region. Issues like environment, management of the Pacific Ocean, increased trade and investment, and infrastructure development. The coming years will be testing times for the country as it prepares not only for the APEC Leaders Summit meeting in 2018, but also the 2015 Pacific Games and the Pacific Islands Youth Meeting in the same year. Bridget Komatep, National MTV News. 
Well, it seems that the connection between absent public servants and poor service delivery has finally been made and there is going to be something done about it. The National Executive Council recently endorsed a proposed public service time and attendance system policy to manage uncontrolled absenteeism of large numbers of public servants. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said Cabinet endorsed the proposed policy and reiterated ministers' and governors' concerns about poor timekeeping and daily attendance of public servants, resulting in poor service delivery over the years. The Department of Personnel Management has been directed by Cabinet to set up a timekeeping and attendance task force headed by its secretary as chairman to work with other lead agencies to establish and coordinate this project. Police in Medang Town have raised concerns over lack of support that they get to address the town's law and order problems. Police manpower and housing problems are just some of the many hardships faced by the police force in Medang. With the rise in petty crimes in the town, the police are doing their best to contain the problem. Housing has been a problem for Medang police officers in the last 10 years. The houses are crumbling and their request for new facilities have received little response so far. Acting Medang Provincial Police Commander Ben Neneo says this has greatly affected recruitment of new police officers for the town. Uh, we see the big problem is uh, with police now in Medan is uh, our manpower. Like uh, uh, we do not have uh, accommodation, so at the same time that uh, is not uh, helpful when we want to have more personal staff from Bomana who are passing out. Uh, that that doesn't help so what uh, men we I have on the ground uh, we continue to have that until accommodation uh, improves here in Meden for police. Public safety in Medang town is now a concern for provincial authorities to address in due course. Petty crimes have been frequent in the town and many people were harassed and robbed in the last 12 months. Locals have also expressed disappointment about the law and other problems in Medang Town. Pickpocket passing is come up inside the town area where you know say enough him like nothing in law man Mary law Medang Town street. Illegal settlements in the town have also made it easier for the production of ombro, which is a major contributing factor towards Medang's law and order problems. Police say there is greater need for support from all stakeholders in addressing these problems. Uh, it's all related to uh, Lika where we see most of the crimes uh, committed by people uh, indulging uh, illicit drugs and uh, ombro. Known as the tourism hub in Papua New Guinea, Medang has been one of the most visited towns in the Pacific. The problem has also became a concern for the business community. Sylvester Gawi, National MTV News. A man in his late 50s was bound and tortured last week Saturday for allegedly killing a woman using sorcery. The woman's relatives tricked John Colley and brought him to their home where he was tied up and tortured for several days. John Colley says he is innocent and could have been killed for something that could not be proven. MTV's Bethany Harriman talked to the victim, John Colley. John Colley and his granddaughter live in this compound near the Timber College. Last week, Saturday, a group of men came to his house and told him to follow them to a meeting. They told him that he had to go and sought out complaints that he was practicing sorcery and killed a woman. Koli followed them to where they live. They tied him up and beat him, fracturing his skull and breaking his ribs. They knocked out all of his teeth. Koli says he asked them why they were beating him and told them to go bring proof that he used sorcery to kill the woman. And then he came and asked him all. When he asked through, you placate me nothing. When he asked me, when he came to the of you placate me you placate me nothing. We talk him all. So no God. But you provide it, that's the talk I come now, you blow me, bro. You push him, man. Don't perish, bro, you eat, and that we can't take him, now we can't stop, bro, yeah. Or something, I'm going to cut him, let's go, you know. 
John Colley lives with his granddaughter in this small house. If he was killed, he would leave her behind without a guardian. Talita John, his granddaughter, was with the group that went to get her grandfather back. They are both still shaken by the ordeal. What happened to John has brought widespread condemnation in the community surrounding the Nawai block area. Me bring plenty man who and have a more sour cooking steam or this lap. I must have a house line is the band. Message will pop on in your same. This is a passing blow, you believe long. A Sanguman or Marilena, this is an excellent libel, Nablo man, M. Big Platambutru. Now government put in Big Platambutru, Lord of Parliament, and this plan come up with some law. So time you Alex Dawa is John's neighbor. He is also a community leader who is concerned that the Sorcery Act isn't working. It comes six months after Ramu's mass sorcery killing. Children were also killed and a man was decapitated. John Colley is lucky, but he says the trauma of nearly being killed will haunt him for the remaining years of his life. Sorcery in PNG is proven by evidence. Those who are accused can then be prosecuted. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News, Lay. For the first time, Papua New Guinea will get a medical service it never had before. The Fred Hollows Foundation, in partnership with the Divine Word University in Medang, commissioned a new eye theatre last Friday. The focus now is to help those who can't afford eye treatment services overseas. While it is a new era for Papua New Guinea's medical sector, there are many more challenges. Firstly, the facility is the only one in existence in the country. And secondly, they have to be focused on how this service can be made available to the bulk of the population in rural areas. MTV's Edwin Fidelis has tonight's MTV News special report. Located at the Modilon General Hospital, the new eye treatment facility is now open to the public in Medang and the rest of Papua New Guinea. It may seem small, but its existence is one that the country has never had before. This medical equipment for eye treatment was a contribution from the Australian-based Fred Olos Foundation. The foundation operates in Medang and works closely with the Divine World University and the Modilon General Hospital to provide training to eye health professionals. We are building the national health system of Papua New Guinea. We're not working in an allied or in an isolated way. And so the Fred Hollows Foundation seeks to train Papua New Guinea doctors to be ophthalmologists, that's a specialist eye doctor, and Papua New Guinea nurses to be specialist eye nurses. At the opening of the facility on Thursday last week, Father Jan Chuba, president of the Divine World University, said Papua New Guinea should be focusing on creating basic services that is not only reliable but sustainable in long terms. Its strategic aims are to change government policies, health systems and resourcing decisions to increase access to eye health, mostly for the most marginalized people, people living in remote areas. At the eye care ward, I met Albert and his 10-year-old daughter. They came all the way from West New Britain province to seek this eye care service. Doctor, I've been checking my blood and I've been talking to my blood and I'm right to show you. One of the things that I've been doing is to be able to do it. I've been able to do it. I've been able to do it. I've been able to do it. His daughter was struck on the right eye with a piece of wood while playing with her friends. She may not be able to see again, but her experience is one that reminds everyone about the importance of the eye. Here, you also get a sense of the importance of this service that Papua New Guinea haven't seen for many years. Uh, normally, uh, on average, we see close to 300 to 500 patients in a day. But since the introduction of the new eye building and staff, uh, we are seeing close to more than 800 in a month. Last month, we have seen, uh, ending last month, we have seen close to 928 patients. So it is going to be increased day by day. Much of these health services can only be found in urban areas. For those in the rural areas, they are still far away from these services. And it is also a challenge for those delivering this service. 
The Fred Olofs Foundation is now looking into the future, it says. They are now looking at bringing these services to the bulk of the population in rural areas where most of the people have only heard of it but never had the chance to use it. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News. And we'll bring you more local stories after these short messages. Stay with us. Good to have you back with National MTV News. The PNG Institute of Public Administration will see big changes in coming years. From its infrastructures to its workforce, the government will look to transform the institute to be a more effective training centre for public servants. Today, Public Services Minister Sir Pukatemu visited the IPA campus in Waigani and pledged his support to the institution. For years, the PNG Institute of Public Administration, or PNG IPA, has been left without proper attention from the government. This can be seen through some of its degrading infrastructure. While the government is stressing to improve the quality of its service delivery to all corners of the country, it will focus to revive this important institution to enhance the output in public service delivery. In a meet with staff of PNG IPA this morning, Public Services Minister Se Pukatemu reaffirmed the staff that the government has put the rebuilding of IPA in its top agenda. The minister said IPA will take a new direction and restore the public's confidence in public services. There are some saying we don't have confidence in it. There are some of us who are saying if we, if we bring these resources or if we build a nation this way, then we will, we will bring efficiency in the delivery of public goods and services in the country. While PNG IPA will launch a corporate plan from 2015 to 2019, it will look into quality service delivery in all levels of the government. This is one of its planned goals, and Minister Temu said the new IPA will help in quality service delivery. And so the government is very, very serious because we want to deliver. It's not because of politics, and I want to understand this. We, we are not saying we want to deliver because of politics' sake. No, our people are waiting for us to deliver. That's the bottom line. While the institution has seen a fair share of ups and downs over the last year, newly appointed director Ngori Wiwareng said IPA has restored some of its development partners' confidence. And this Thursday, a delegation from the Australian government will meet with PNG IPA to start discussions on the rebuilding of the institution. We have an, uh, the Australian delegation that the uh, minister and, and was referring to. They'll visit us here on Thursday. The new corporate plan for PNG IPA will be launched soon. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. The Nomination and Remuneration Committee of the Steamships Trading Limited Company Board of Directors has recommended the appointment of Peter Eitze as an additional independent non-executive director. The appointment takes effect on the 17th of this month. Mr. Eitze, currently PNG Country Manager for Newcrest Mining Limited, is from Berena in the Central Province. He is a former president of the Media Council of PNG, a position he held for the past seven years, and is also former chairman of Transparency International PNG. He currently serves on the boards of PNG FM, City Pharmacy Group Limited, Leadership PNG, as well as IPBC, representing Transparency International PNG and various Newcrest PNG entities. The Madang Fire Service has again raised concerns on their capacity to respond to fire emergencies in Madang. Firefighters say Madang will need a better equipped fire service to cater for its needs. This comes after a series of fires in Leh and Mount Hagen that has left many people questioning the ability of the PNG Fire Service to effectively respond to fires. This is the single man barracks that is being used by eight firefighters at the Madang Fire Station. The rest of the men find their own accommodation outside of town. PNG's emergency services have been hit hard by public criticisms that label them as incompetent. But performing their job to expectation is quite difficult, the Medang firefighter said. Not all stations only got, uh, all the stations throughout the country only got one kind of equipment. Uh, there are some stations, uh, regional centers only got equipment, the medium, Development standard only will take place of nuclear supply stations. Where nuclear will still develop or will develop common top. Equipment, I mean, you know, up to standard. 
Their ability is limited as they don't have the necessary equipment needed to put out a fire in an instant. Their story is no different to the rest of other emergency services that is being provided elsewhere in the country. You got something in plan where well, about upgrading station, but it's not Minos when. Medang Town have also suffered from numerous fires. In 2010, the Medang Technical College lost a male dormitory to fire. A year later, Martin Seng's shop was destroyed. The PNG fire service capabilities and immediate response has so far come up to the fore and has been widely criticized. About two months ago, three fires destroyed properties in Lei in a span of a week. In Mount Hagen, seven shops were gutted by fire. But like Medang, Lei and Mount Hagen, their stories are similar. They all need a major overhaul to the fire stations, new equipment, more manpower and more staff accommodation. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News. And now we check out the finance news. The Kina closed at 0.394 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3875 US dollars, 0.4439 Australian dollars, 0.3073 Euro and 43.87 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and cocoa closed higher, coffee closed lower, while copra closed the down changed. Crude oil and copper closed higher, while palm oil closed lower. And lastly on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 19 points higher, the ASX and the All Ordinaries closed the day unchanged. Coming up next, we'll bring you more local updates, including newsmaking headlines overseas. Stay with us. Welcome back. Turning overseas now, Germans have released thousands of balloons into the sky to mark the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. The magnitude of celebrations proved a fitting tribute to that momentous day in history when the wall separating East and West was torn down. Well, we are getting towards the end of the 25th anniversary celebrations of the wall coming down and the DJs have taken over, not that the crowd minds, because I don't think anyone has really gone home. There was expected to be anywhere between one and two million people crowd around the centre of Berlin tonight and especially around Brandenburg Gate where these celebrations have taken place for this uh, show that has now lasted for the best part of four hours. Peter Gabriel kicked it off with quite an emotional uh, version of Heroes, the David Bowie classic that was written when he lived in West Germany. Uh, but the signature event of the night, I suppose, would be that moment when those 8,000 glowing balloons that had been lined up for a couple of days here, they formed a route uh, that would have split what was East and West Berlin, and over the course of a few hours, they were let go and those balloons rose into the sky this evening. And that marked uh, quite a stunning tribute uh, because it was now, today, 25 years ago, uh, that the announcement was made that the wall would come down. And today, everyone here is having a great time because they remember that, and they remember it well. In the United States, emergency services in Texas have been sent into overdrive. Hundreds of people called to report a fireball or the sound of explosions across the night sky. Tonight, across central Texas, many are asking, did you see it? That fire in the sky that some say caused a sonic boom. We heard an explosion here on 5-7. You can see the fireball on this dash cam video. And look at it here on this police cruiser cam. NASA confirming to ABC News it was a meteor. Four feet long, 4,000 pounds, traveling 55,000 miles per hour. It looked like it was across, like in, in towards uh, Mexico. Just last week, people in several states saw fireballs racing through the sky. And overseas, check out this one streaking over Japan. NASA estimates nearly 50 tons of meteorite reach our atmosphere every single day. The reason we don't have to wear helmets? The vast bulk of it burns up in the atmosphere. But massive space rocks sometimes do hit and hit big, like last year in Russia. The shockwave blowing out windows, hundreds injured. And right now, the time to be looking up. Three different meteor showers peppering Earth, meaning we'll see more of these images that are out of this world. Two American men are safe with their families after a terrifying ordeal in a North Korea prison. 
The pair was set free after America's top spy master made a secret trip to the country. Tonight, the last of the two Americans held prisoners in North Korea are back on U.S. soil. Kenneth Bay, who'd been sentenced to 15 years of hard labor, accused of preaching against the regime, home today. Along with Matthew Todd Miller, held captive after apparently entering North Korea illegally in April, North Korea says he'd asked for asylum there. They arrived on a military plane overnight. It's been an um, amazing two years. I learned a lot. I grew a lot. Lost a lot of weight. Both now free because of a last-minute secretive trip by America's spy master, Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. Sources telling ABC News the North Koreans requested a visit by a high-level official. Clapper apparently carrying a personal message from President Obama. U.S. officials say it was not an apology or negotiation, and he did not meet with Kim Jong-un, the country's mysterious leader. This is what we call a charm offensive, where they're saying, hey, you know, we're not really that bad, and we can show you that we can make uh, life easier for everybody. Just last month, the other American held there also freed. Jeffrey Fowle was caught by officials leaving a Bible in a bathroom. So they packed me into a black VW sedan, four-door sedan, two heavy big guys on either side of me. How did they treat you physically? Physically, I was not abused at all. I had three meals a day. Tonight, the Bay family says they can't wait to spend the holidays together. We're just glad to have him home. We don't really care how or who or when. We're just happy to have him home. And that report concludes our news segment tonight. But do stay tuned. We've got True Kind Sports coming up next. We'll have reports on boxing, squash and golf. Stay with us. Two Kai Sports. BSP PNG Games 2014. Five days to go. Support your province. Former Commonwealth Games fighter Paul Lare has been assisting the Wabek team to the sixth BSP PNG Games. The team has six fighters, five men, and one woman. The team from Wambeg is hopeful that NCD Governor Powis Parker will keep his promise to give them new boxing gloves following their call for assistance. The Gold Ridge province has some setbacks and that's because this team has been training without much assistance. <laughs> However, they are fortunate to be guided by Paul Larry a former Commonwealth Games representative in the lightweight division. He fought in the 2006 Games in Melbourne, Australia. Larry moved to Wabek four years ago and has been coaching this talented group who are aiming for medals at the PNG Games. One, one, two, three, three, four. And though they are contacts, they were able to secure sponsorship from NCD Governor Powis Pakop. Powis Pakop took the help of all the bunnies and some of the materials for boxing. So I like to thank you for helping me at the right time straight because I need all the equipment straight for them and I'm helping me at the right time. So I like to thank you for the governor of Mosby. So, I think it looks like a new game. The boxing team from Enga is currently training at Makambeli in The boxing team from Enga is currently training at Makambeli in preparations for the PNG Games in just five days. Godwin Aki, National MTV Sports. The Morave family has the NCD squash team looking sharp for the 6th BSP PNG Games. In the AVET squash finals held over the weekend, young star Robin Moravet defeated Colin Kickton three sets to nil, taking lead 15 to 12, 15 to 9, and 15 to 10 in all three sets. Sheila Moravet took out the first place in the women's round robin with 25 points, and sister Stephanie took second place with 20 points. All three Moravets are part of the NCD squash team and with great confidence are looking to return from lay with some favorable results. 14-year-old Vagi James was beaming when he was awarded the best golfer of the 2014 Telecom PNG Golf Pennant held yesterday. Vagi started as a caddy and worked his way up to becoming a recognized golfer. 
is not different from any other teenager, but the name Giant Killer is already on the lips of his teammates, Team Elamodus. There is no doubt about this golfing talent when he recorded high points on the course to claim in the 2014 Best Golfer Award. Vagi started off as a caddy, this young Eastern Highlands and horror mix golfer, he served for something big from his humble debut in 2011. It's hard all the time, I think he's had two losses in the whole year, right? so that's all he's had. The rest of the time he's won. And uh, so it doesn't care whether the guy's 50 years of age, he beat a guy who was 40, 40 odd years difference to him the other day. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter. He just gets out there and he hits that ball. He's only, he's only tiny, but he hits that ball further than you and I could ever hit it. Buggy James is one example of Imagine Junior Golf stars from the Telecom sponsored golf pennants. The 18 old course saw keen golfers taking time out on every third Sunday of each month. The tournament teed off in March this year. Certainly not a walk in the park for Team Kumo Tires, a now 2013 Telecom Golf Pennants champions, Alamodos, and claiming this year's title. Great action was seen from Mirupasi lawyers, DHL, Bank of South Pacific, and Telecom itself finished off at the bottom of the leaderboard. Stalin Dragon took away the runner-up title, while the other eight teams enjoyed the free Wi-Fi internet service on location. Um, telecom itself is it's an old business. It's a legacy business with a lot of infrastructure that needs to be renewed and upgraded. And this infrastructure, unlike mobile networks, uh, does take time. And we're in the process of renewing our business. Only six months in the office and already Mr. Dunley is showing keen interest to continue the Telecom PNG support to the Gulf Pennant. Terry Alex, National MTV Sports. And now we take a look at the Youth Soccer Championship final results. The Madang Under-18 women's team have been crowned the 2014 champions of the New Guinea Table Birds Championship. Tournament director Sigi Benschel, while congratulating their victory, also thanked teams for their participation. The Madang Under-18 women's team scooped the award after registering four wins in the championship held at Laiwad and Oval. Unfortunately, most centers failed to turn up, but this didn't stop the Madang versus Lee challenge. Under 15 registered teams were only Medang and Ramu resulting on a friendly match, while in the under 18, Medang Eben, Medang Ramu Sugar, Lee Football Association, Lahi and Watut. Medang Governor Jim Kass made time available to share the soccer spirit and presented awards to winners. <laughs> Team Ramu of Medang was proud to compete in the championship as this was the avenue to market their talented players. Ramu walked home with the Fair Play Award. It's the sponsorship for, for our youth tournaments. Uh, they've been here with us for probably three years now. This is the third year. So we are going to start with Ramu Baba, followed by my the championship sponsored by Papua New Guinea's leading chicken manufacturing company, New Guinea Table Birds, aims to promote future sports ambassadors in the code of soccer. Tournament director Sigi Bashel says the championship is a new identification tool for the Papua New Guinea Football Association to select young, talented role players. <laughs> National MTV Sports, Medang. More to come in True Kind Sports after the break. And the Kangaroos say they are ready to take on the Kiwis in the Four Nations final. Stay with us for the details. True Kai's. Good to have you back with True Kai Sports. The Hello Wigman's William Moniz efforts weren't in vain when the Hekari Tarangals edged out Giga and Lighter Souths 14 points to 12. And the Port Moresby Rugby League semi-finals played over the weekend. Paul Jackson scored a double for the Brown and Gold outfit to advance to the grand final playoff. 
Port Mosby Rugby League went into its semi-final over the weekend with Gigira Light Apple Souths and the Akari Tarangaus. The Mari Barracks Oval was packed with regulars and first-timers who were on their best behavior to catch a glimpse of Port Mosby footy action. The Gigira Light Apple Souths were out for an intense battle and didn't go down easily on the boys from Bumana. Tarangaus, with exceptional performance so far in the season, were informed when they took the lead through Paul Jackson as the match unfolded. Tarangaus, led by Jackson, extended their lead and kept the boys in red, green, gold and black under pressure. The coveted PRL ball boy who was drafted into the Digital Cup's reigning team, Hala Wigman, Willem Mone was out for the Souths, taking them onto the scoring board with an opener. The well-kept Mary Barracks Oval was buzzing with a dazzling Tarangaus outfit, proving to be no easy bits right till half time. The 10-4 half-time deficit woke up Souths to recoup and fight back. <laughs> William Monet showed his potency to cross the try line the second time around, while Clement Tumbai headed a third. Tarangao struck with a close 14-12 win to meet the winners of the call-off match between Hohola Flies and Butterflies to be played this weekend. Tere Alex, National MTV Sports. Still in Rugby League, the Kangaroos say they have become a much better side after the one-hand ambush by New Zealand two weeks ago and the Aussies will be using that defeat to motivate them in Saturday's Four, Na Four Nations final in Wellington, New Zealand. The Kangaroos are on the hop heading to Wellington to play in a final they've had to fight to make all the way. At times they've looked flat, but desire has got them this far. Greg Inglis somehow rising time and again. Me personally, it's... You know, it is a long season, but at the end of the day, you know, if you're fit and ready to play, well, then obviously you're going to play, and that's just the competitive nature of us players. And now we're enjoying each other's company, enjoying being in camp. There was no player who enjoyed the win over Samoa more than debutant Josh Jackson, the senior player is making his job easy. They've been great since since uh, day one. You know, I suppose they've all been in in that situation as well, and and they know what a um, what a special day it is. So you know, for them guys to to take me under their wing and, you know, make it, make it a special day for me. It's, um, you know, it's, it's something I'll never forget. The Australians say they've got their mojo back, but they haven't forgotten how easily the Kiwis dismissed them in the opening game of the tournament. What worries you about them? Uh, obviously our last performance. Um, yeah, they, they seem to generate a lot of momentum through the middle third of our field and um, scored a lot of points too. So I think that's something we've shored up. Our, our middle third defensive effort has improved as the competition has gone on. Um, our set plays from our positions that we've we set our marks are, are much better. I think it's uh, coming together at the right time. Um, you know, like I said, hiccup in the first week, but you know, he started working well um, against England. And Cronk says as each game passes, he and Daly Cherry Evans are growing in confidence. We're combining well. Um, we haven't played a lot of football together. We've obviously been in the same systems in different teams for a long period of time. But uh, Daly's got his chance to play a preferred position. Yeah, I think it, it, it's settling in really well. And that wraps up True Guy Sports tonight. Coming up next, the weather details. Stay with us for... True Guy Sports. True Kai Sports. Looking at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in southern region, all centres fine weather. In Momase, fine weather expected in Madang, morning shower or two in Lay City, a few showers in Wewak and Funimore. In the New Guinea Islands, fine weather expected in Loringa, Kavang and Rabaul, including Kimbe, and a shower or two expected in Buka. And in the Highlands region, all centres cloudy weather except Mount Hagen, fine although low cloudy periods expected. Forecast for small ships, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, through to Karima to Yule Island, Hood Point to Arama Coast and Samurai Island, seas of 1.5 to 2.5 metres, waters of Cape Vogel to Wasu Point to Finchafin, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 metres, waters of Eastern and Western Milan Bay Islands, seas of 1.5 to 2.5 metres, waters of Finchafin including Bitya Strait through to Siasi Islands and Long Island, seas of 1.5 to 2.5, waters of Long Island to Medang to Bogia through to Wewak, 
Aitape to Vanimore and the northern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres, waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres, waters of New Island to East New Britain through to Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres, and waters of East of West New Britain rather, seas of 1.5 to 2.5 metres. An ocean forecast for PNG areas, Coral Sea seas moderate to rather rough with southeast winds at 15 to 25 knots, Solomon Sea seas slight to moderate with southeast winds at 10 to 20 knots, Bismarck Sea seas slight with southeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots, and lastly Pacific Ocean seas slight with north to northeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. Now before we go, we'll quickly look at today's top stories. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill reaffirms PNG's commitment to provide leadership for the 2018 APEC meeting in the China-Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Also, a man accused for sorcery and torture for allegedly killing a woman. And Fred Hollow's foundation opens a new eye care surgical theatre in Medang. Well, that's been the news, sports and weather tonight. From the news team, I'm Tokana Asavi. Thanks for your company. You take care and stay safe. Good night.